In today's video, we're gonna talk about who you should be maining in Apex Legends and why. What's good, everyone? In this one, I'm hoping to bring you some more clarity on who you should be playing for Season 11 and beyond. But first, in order to do that, we need to talk about the different classes of Legends and discuss their roles on the team. Currently in Season 11, there are 19 Legends in the game and Apex plans to keep adding a Legend every season, which is kind of insane if you think about it because this game has a multi-year plan in place. But anyways, in order to figure out who to main, you first have to ask yourself one question. How do I like to play? Let me explain. When picking a main in Apex, it's key to identify your play style. Do you want to run and gun and try to fight everyone, or are you a bit more passive? Do you enjoy assisting your teammates more so than being the front fragger of the team? Because identifying these features will quickly help you find the right fit to your play style. Now of course another reason players main a specific legend is because of that legend's personality or the lore behind them. Now I can understand that thought behind this, but I don't know, it's not really the best way to go about picking your main. I try not to get too attached to a specific legend because things tend to change up every season or two. Legends get buffed or nerfed or a new legend comes out and could be similar to your main and kind of steal their show so to speak. The personality is cool, but it's not the real reason you should be picking your main especially if you're more focused on how to improve at Apex. Of course, if you're just playing Apex here and there and you don't really care, personality is a fine way to select the legend. Apex breaks down their legends into four categories, offensive, defensive, support, and recon. But just understand, some of these legends fit more into a different class rather than the ones Apex put them in, and others can be made up from multiple different categories despite being labeled as a specific one. A few examples of this would be Bloodhound. Yes, Bloodhound is a recon legend, but ultimately that's a supportive role. The scan is something that supports the team's game sense. It's a different level of support compared to say Lifeline where her drone can res her teammates, but they still assist the team in different ways. Another example is Pathfinder. See, Pathfinder is also considered a recon legend, but this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense if you know his abilities. So for this video, I'm going to break down the legends into some different classes. Ones that I think apply more to the legend, and this should be more helpful for you when it comes to who you decide to main. First, we have Mobility Legends, and yes, I created this class, but this makes a whole lot of sense if you just follow along. These legends at their core have abilities that can help navigate themselves and or their teammates around the map. These legends in nature are more aggressive. They can use their abilities to create space in fights or do the opposite in closing the gap. This could potentially help secure a knock on a kill. These legends are great for solo queuing because as we all know, randoms are just going to be randoms. And if you at least have some abilities that can help you navigate in and out of tricky situations, well, you can definitely benefit from that. Now, despite having some other features that technically put them in other classes, I want to try to make this as simple as possible. So for mobility legends, we have Wraith, Pathfinder, Octane, Horizon, Loba, Valkyrie, and Ash, kind of. Wraith, Path, and Octane are obviously the OG mobility legends, and both of their abilities center around movement. The other three are more multifaceted in having an offensive ability or ultimate coupled with a movement ability. And of course, Loba has more of a supportive ultimate for her and her team. I do recommend trying out a mobility legend if you are new and you are solo queuing, but keep in mind some of these legends will be more difficult to navigate because some of them have a skill gap, meaning different players at different skill levels can perform better or worse with them depending on how experienced they are with those legends. If you guys are enjoying this video, please do me one favor and just smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This helps my video out a ton, and as always, I'll throw in a clip of me skating at the end. It's just a little token of appreciation for you doing so. Moving on to support legends. Now support legends are pretty self-explanatory. These legends are designed to support the team. They are especially useful when you pair them with other legends that can help you buy time, such as an airstrike or being able to cut off line of sight. This playstyle is vastly different from others such as mobility or the assault type legends. Typically support characters aren't the ones engaging initially and more so are staying behind and being able to come in towards the end of the fight and help clean it up. Legends such as Lifeline, Bloodhound, Seer, Loba, and Watson are the ones you want to play if this playstyle fits yours. Lifeline can absolutely change the outcome of a fight if you are able to res your teammate quickly. And Bloodhound Scan is probably the biggest form of support in our current meta of Apex. It's crazy what wall hacks can do to your game sense. 
Loba also supports the team by being able to bring a more consistent way of getting loot. A lot of the time, if an engagement goes on for too long, you can run low on ammo. And Loba is great to help her and her team by supplying them with whatever ammo or loot is in the nearby area. Do not underestimate the power that these characters can bring if you use them efficiently and correctly. Legends such as Gibby and Caustic are also considered support legends in my opinion, and they are some of the top tier legends in this category. The big boy legends will certainly take some time to get used to because they have big hitboxes and they feel like they move slower even though they don't. You will see a Gibby on just about every team in high level ranked and competitive apex. Gibby and Caustic are unique because they have a supportive role but they also can be offensive or defensive with their abilities. Now it's key to remember here, if you solo queue in the supportive role, it will be difficult at times because a lot of the times if you do solo queue, randoms will die and leave the game on you. And if you are stuck in a supportive role without teammates to support, well, I think you get the picture. If you are a newer player and you're just not sure who to play yet, don't worry, I'm gonna cover this later in the video, but just understand, taking on the supportive role can be a nice way to ease into things if you are fairly new to Apex. Next we have Assault Legends aka offensive legends. These legends include Bangalore, Mirage, Revenant, Fuse, and a few others. But assault legends are the characters who have abilities that favor damage dealing or abilities that are used to cause more things to go down in the fight. These legends can help those who have trouble finding the advantage in a fight. Legends like Fuse have abilities to deal damage, which is great if you want to just cause mass chaos in any engagement. If you don't necessarily want to play a legend like Fuse, someone such as Bangalore or Mirage are great as well. The kit of those two characters is all about using line of sight and confusion to your advantage. Being able to bend the line of sight to your favor can have a huge impact on the outcome. Now they're not necessarily S tier legends, but if you are easing into Apex, Bangalore is a very new player friendly legend, and I do recommend trying her out if you are new to the whole ability nature of Apex. Abilities in Apex initially were only meant to attribute to something like 15% of the engagements, but walking that fine line gets more and more difficult every season. The main reason is the addition of a new legend every season, and the demand from the sections of the community to buff other legends that aren't quite up to par with the rest of the bunch. So for this reason, you should get acquainted with the fact that abilities are going to continue to play a significant role in a lot of your engagements, and the quicker you can accept this, the better off you will be going forward. Now as for newer players who may be starting out or possibly have a couple hundred hours in the game and are still unsure, well I've got some advice for you. I don't want newer players to overwhelm themselves with trying all the legends because it will take a while to understand the intricacies of each and every legend. So for this reason, I recommend you select two to three legends that you want to quote unquote main. You need at least two because if you play with randoms or you squad up with some friends, they may play your main. So you want to have a backup. It's never good to be a one trick in a game like Apex. So try your best to get familiar with two to three legends. If you are a bit more skilled and have played the game for a while, playing all of the legends can make Apex more refreshing at times because it can create a challenging aspect to the game by simply just playing everyone. Personally, I like to do this myself, as people always ask me, who do I main? And I just say, I play everyone. I have the 4k damage badge on all of the legends. Well, except Ash because I haven't played her too much this season. But I always try to be familiar with all of the different playstyles in the game. This helps me not only to be flexible depending on the current meta that shapes up, but it also helps me know how to outplay each and every legend. See, once you master a legend in Apex, you know their strong suits and their weak spots. So when you come across that legend in a match, you will know where you want to catch that legend slipping. So if you feel like you want to take the aggressive mobility role, try to select two of those legends. And on the flip side, if you want to take on more of a supportive role, go ahead and try to main two or three of the support characters. I did make a tier list this season, but I definitely would swap out two to three of the picks from when I made it at the beginning of the season. But regardless, it's still pretty accurate. If you guys are new here, just know my channel centers around helping you all improve at Apex Legends. So if you aren't already subscribed, I hope you will consider doing so. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to join my Discord if you are looking for teammates or just want to chat about Apex. And if you're looking for Apex coaching lessons, the Fiverr link below has got you covered. Here's the clip of me skating. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.